Insane in the Membrane. Hello and welcome to another edition of your favourite podcast, Insane in the Membrane, with me, Rich Wilson. And today I'm joined by the marvellous Sakisa. Hello. Hi. Uh, how, how are you? you doing? Are you good? You all right? I'm good, thank you. I've noticed that you're looking quite sexy for me today. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I've got a made an effort for you, babes. <laughs> yeah, you took off, like, you had no sunglasses, you've done your hair. What's happened? <laughs> <laughs> this is just nothing. I, went, I just didn't wear a hat today. I just went, I've got no natural. And, um, yeah, your hair looks nice as well. I don't, I've not seen your hair like that before. No, I, d- I thought I'd do it for my... Um, a period of time that I lo- don't like to talk about, which is my birthday. Um, so I was okay. like, I'm going to change my hairstyle for my birthday uh, to make myself cheer myself up. Um, it did not work. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. Uh, so I was, it's going to get changed back to what it originally was, like, next week. Right, right, right. <laughs> it looks great that I like it. I think it looks great. It's got to Thank stop you. worrying about your birthday, man. Don't worry about your birthday. It's just a number. It doesn't matter. Doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, but that number keeps getting bigger. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a measurement of time. Don't worry about it. It's all. It's all about what's in your. It's, it's all about what's in your heart and in your head. Don't worry about the rest of that shit. Oh, by the way, the although the industry is a bit ageist, so yeah, you might be fucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, the older I, I get, know. the worse this is going to yeah, get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's changing. I think it's changing. I hope it's changing. But well, like you were just saying yeah. about social media and that, it's like I was talking to um, Joe Foster about this yesterday. And we were just saying, like, you just have to accept the fact that social media is a part of what we do now. Just this. Yeah. I, I really wish I could do, like, be, like, had my career probably, like, 10 years ago. Because mm. then you can get away with not having to be on social media because your name oh, is yeah. enough for people to, like, come to shows. Yeah. That was all. I was exactly what I said yesterday. When I started in 2004... All you had to worry about was writing your jokes and doing your jokes. That was it. You didn't have to sort of promote yourself. There wasn't anywhere where, you know, the promoter of a night was going, oh, can you, can you plug this? Or can you, can you stick these leaflets for this door, for the do- through the yeah. doors of all the people around the place of the gig that you're doing? There's none of that. It was just turn up, do the gigs. And now we've got to be, we've got to be a business now, babes. I know. Did you say you started in 2004? Was that BC or AD? <laughs> Do you know what? This is not a time to just like <laughs> unleash your bullshit. All the bullshit from everyone else on me. <laughs> I know we could take this. Richard, we had to take it. He's got broad shoulders. I love you. Um, yeah, it was. <laughs> it seems like, but 2004 doesn't even seem that long ago. But it's like nearly 20 years now. I know. It, I was thinking about um, when how because I start. I do like comedy courses. I like as a run, I run a comedy course, and people keep asking mm. me like about how things were back in the day, and I was just like, I was just like, don't say back in the day. That's gonna make me feel really bad about my life. <laughs> um, but like, it was very different. Like, there wasn't as much open mic nights. There wasn't as many comedians. Uh, like, and a lot of PC stuff that people can't talk about now wasn't really happening. So like, it was a different time. So. Mm. Oh, An yeah, easier definitely. time, if you want to call it that way. Well, like you say, there were fewer people doing it, and so it just seems like it, what it always it reminds me now. There's that film, the zombie film with Brad Pitt. I can't remember what it's called. World War Z, and all the zombies yeah. are piling up against the wall, and they're all trampling over each other to get to the top. And I'm like, that feels like comedy sometimes. It's like you need to chill out, everyone. Everyone needs to fucking back off a bit. Just relax, you know. Try and enjoy it rather than trying to climb up every, over everybody and to to get to the, the so-called top. Relax. It's all going to be yeah. fine. And also, what you know? is the definition of the top? I don't understand. Like, yeah. what I want to achieve is not what other people want to achieve. Like, some people, when I started, were very much like, I want to be famous. I want to be big. And I'm just like, I just want to make some money. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same. I just want to not, not worry about money every month. That'd be nice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that'd be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't you start off in didn't you start off in the cabaret world that where you started off or were you a comedian first or I it's a it's a weird comp, like overlap situation I used to be a dancer when I was younger and mm. then my parents were very much not into me uh dancing because they were like it's never going to make you a career so I carried on like 
dancing for fun. And then I started working in a pub during university called the Cabinet Arms and they introduced me to um, cabaret shows. So yeah. then I started making friends with like people who were running the cabaret shows. And I was like, I can incorporate what I do in terms of dancing in the cabaret world. And then around the same time, my boss told me, why don't I give stand-up comedy a go? So they kind of overlapped. I didn't have a cabaret right. burlesque name until six years ago. Um, I used to just come out on stage and dance. So it's it's a weird overlap. But yeah, mm. I used to like, I've performed for a very long time. I've just never had the confidence to really like be present on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We sort of we were like hiding behind the dancing and the the. That well, no, it's more like I was. I didn't have a name. I didn't think it could be a career. Same with right. like stand up comedy. I wasn't very good at public public speaking when I was starting out. So, and I don't think I am very good at like talking to people in general. I think it's it's weird when I say that now, um, because people are like, well, obviously, <laughs> like you do stand up comedy and like you're yeah. an MC, so you host quite a lot. But I'm like, it's very different to like talking to someone on stage in a persona. And then being off stage and having to talk to someone as your like yeah. as as your real self. So, um, what have you been up to? Anything? How you for? How's your head? How's your head, Sakisa? How is um, your head? Uh, honestly, not great to be honest. Uh, All right. And I yeah. So it's like the last year and a bit, mm. like just a bit, year and a bit, um, has have had some extreme stuff happen and I've not dealt with it very well. But also, right. um, I feel like I had, like I said to you before, my birthday is not a very good time of year for me. So I go into a very weird situation and place, which I've realized I can't um, communicate to people right. properly about why, how I'm feeling that way and why I'm feeling that way. Um, and I think it's due to the fact that I got recently diagnosed as being dyslexic. Um, okay. So I, my, sh my new show is all about that. But I've realized I'm not very good at communicating my thoughts and feelings. And I will keep some things bottled up because I don't want to get into arguments. And I don't mm. need, I don't want to really like upset anyone. And I've, I've a lot of things I've had to reevaluate about myself as a person. And yeah. I've realized that I don't want to engage with people and that's not really a good thing um yeah i've stopped really engaging with people no really like on a personal level yeah 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 that's we we actually... oh wow that's, that was a whole lot sorry <laughs> yeah man no i asked i asked it's one of those things that yeah i know what you mean i was talking to someone last night and she was saying that uh, you know she's she doesn't mind being on her own but at the minute she hasn't she's not with anybody so she she feels so she doesn't mind being on her own when there's someone to come back to or when there's do you know what I mean? But all of her mates yeah. are busy, and so she's starting to get to a point where she's not communicating with people. She's starting to switch off from it all, and and you're like, we need we need to communicate and we need to be in touch with each other. It really is it really is more important than you realise, and I think yeah, the lockdown's think shown us that. You know what I mean? Like us being shut away from each other. Yeah, I think a lot of my friends don't get it for me when I say mm. that I'm not in a good space or that I don't really feel like talking because then they see me perform or go to me or you, you perform every single day that's you like engaging with people and I'm like it's not it's a different situation different, yeah. it's a it's completely different like I don't have to tell audience members about things I don't want to tell them does that make sense yeah, yeah, and yeah, I have yeah. to tell them. I don't have to tell them things unless I want to tell them things. Where I feel yeah. like your friends, there is an expectation that you have to like be open, be honest, which is great. I completely understand that. But when you're not in a great mindset to talk about certain things, and you or you can't, you don't know how to convey what you want to feel, how how you're feeling, and what you want to say, then that becomes a difficulty. Yeah, 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 and it becomes even more difficult around your birthday. Yeah. Yeah. So it just becomes like I'm getting older. I have I don't feel like I've achieved a lot in my life. Um personally, I don't feel mm. like I've achieved quite a lot in my life. Whereas people are always like, Well, but you've done so much amazing things, I'm like, but that's not how I feel. No. Um they people expect that certain things that I've that I've 
managed to achieve um i should be grateful and happy and i am but that's not what mm. makes me happy yeah 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 i know what you mean and but do you do you are you able to sort of remind yourself of what you have achieved like go through it and go like oh, well i've done that and i've done that and i got i did i got through that do you know what i mean but it does that help or you just it's still there's still like there is still um a percentage of me that doesn't really that's not like completely utterly happy well, there's like mm. a lot of me that's not completely utterly happy but i look at like the things that i've achieved professionally and i do like have to pat myself on the back for those yeah. because a lot of people didn't think i would get to where i am now a lot of people doubted me a lot of people just kind of didn't rate me um mm. And then I had to work harder to prove myself, but I'm just kind of tired of having to like work and fight and like, just, I just want to like have a nice comfortable life. I want to yeah. be rich and have like someone who, who <laughs> loves me sit on a beach, drinking a rum punch all day. Um, and just have a nice tranquil life. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a difficult situation. And I feel yeah. like me going into stand-up comedy probably has made the situation worse. Because um, yeah. I kind of fell into stand-up comedy. It wasn't something I was intending to do. And I've, because like, I don't get to see my friends. I don't get to see any of my godchildren. Um, so, and I feel like a lot of that had time has been the quality time that I like to spend with those people. I've had to sacrifice for comedy. No, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally understand. I've, what people don't understand is that it's exactly like you do give up a lot you, you the amount of time even now i've been doing this like nearly 20 years and people still go oh well what you i've got this wedding or i'm doing this or i'm doing that on this date and i'm like yeah i can't go to that I, it's mm. a saturday night yeah but can't you just have the night off he's like no because i that's i earn my money then i can't I can't have that night off that's why that's why i don't go to these things and it does and it is sad and i have missed out on a lot missed out on my boys growing up you know even though we were still, I was still lucky enough to have people in my lives that, in my life that made it easier for me to be around my boys, I still missed out on so much, you know. And it is, it is. You do sacrifice a lot, and you have to, you have to make that decision. You go right. Do I really want this enough? Do I really want to keep? It? Is it worth the sacrifice? You know. And I think if it gets to a point where you feel like it's not worth the sacrifice, then you have to try and you have to try and look at something else. You know, because it's because yeah. at the end of the day, you don't want to be miserable. You don't because the thing is with comedy, if you're enjoying it, the people watching you enjoying it enjoy it. But if you're if it starts to get you on a level where you just oh this fucking shit again, I'm missing out on these other things because I've got to go to Swindon or wherever. No disrespect to the people of Swindon, but you know it's if it's making you miserable, you have to really reassess. That's yeah. the thing, you know. Like if you, I love doing comedy. Thing is, I can't do anything else. I'm 51. I can't retrain. I you can't could, be... You could do a lot of things. Yeah, but what? I couldn't be employed by someone. I couldn't have a boss now. I'd, my desk could be upside down by lunchtime. I couldn't have it. I couldn't have it. And I I, I, I look at it when when I have those days when I go, oh, yeah, fucking hell. I do look at it and I go, yeah, but look at the things I can do. Look at the things I have achieved and they kind of get me through. Yeah. No, I completely hear that. I, comedy still it makes me happy, and I really do enjoy doing it. I think it's the, everything around it, even like the political stuff, even potentially um, having to like, because I always still work. I still have like right. a day job, so that's more time that I'm not able to like relax and rest and like be and have some mm. sleep. So I think a part of that is to do with that as well. Sounds like you're knackered. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know this me. Is, I work yeah. too hard. I work way too much. <laughs> <laughs> this is what's happening. And this is another thing that people don't really understand. It's like, if you're tired, it affects everything. It affects your mm. mood. Affect on every level. Sleep is so important. And if you're grafting during the day, and then you're having to get in the car and drive for a couple of hours, go and do a gig and then you've got to drive back, you get a couple of hours of sleep, you're going to burn yourself out. So this is, what you need is a holiday. Yeah, I, I was, 
I went on holiday actually with um some of my friends yeah. went to Vegas. <laughs> so that was fun. Okay, right, stop there. I'm gonna stop you there. That's not a holiday. <laughs> what you've done what you've done is kick the arse out of yourself. <laughs> You can't. That's what? not a relax. I've been to Vegas. That's not a relaxing place. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great time. I had. I yeah, had that's so what much I mean. Fun. You had a great time, but at no point did you go. Oh, I feel really chilled. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually like, we didn't do anything like crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, I noticed I had to put three crazies into that. We did. Yeah, we did some yeah, crazy yeah. stuff, but like we exactly. didn't go. <laughs> we didn't go full hardcore. Uh, but it's me and like four lads, or like five lads. No, six lads. Six lads. Me and right. six lads. And you're telling me that when you got there off the plane, you put your little bag in your little room, you freshened up, you had a little bit of a wander around, and then you had an early night, and you're up in the morning to go exploring. No, you got off the plane, you threw your bag in the room, you didn't even go in your room, and you went straight to the bar, <laughs> and you got fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, we did put our bags in the room. Um, right, right, right. Oh, you did put them in there, yeah. We did put them in the room, and then we went out. <laughs> exactly. How long were you there for? Only like, I want to say five. We were there for five days, I think. Four right. nights, five days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, which, yeah, I, no, to be honest, I really think chill. it's enough time for Vegas. Oh, God, yeah, you can't go there for long. I was in Vegas for three days, and that was it. That was it. Yeah. Couldn't do it. Couldn't. It was just, from the moment I got there to the time I left, you're going, yeah, I can't. I, can't, I don't even know where I am anymore. It's ridiculous. So, you know, for you to be going, oh, yeah, I had a holiday. I went to Vegas. You're like, all right, well, then you need a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, hopefully I'll go home in November. Um, okay. Yeah, hopefully I'll go home in November. Yeah, and enjoy enjoy the sun and the beach and the rum punch. Nice. Where is home? That's what, Barbados. Nice, nice. Do you get to go back so, at all? Like often. I've not been back since the pandemic. Right. So it's time for me to go back. I normally go back every year, and then the pandemic happened, and then work got in the way. Like I would normally go over like for our carnival, which happens during July to to the end beginning of August. Yeah. So it's like six weeks of carnival. I would normally go and do that, but unfortunately, the fringe gets in the way for the last two years. Okay. Uh, so hopefully next year I'll be back there in the carnival, but I definitely will be there in November. Yeah. And did you grow up in Barbados? So I went over there for a period of time. Uh, I was born here, and then I went over there because my mum's originally from Barbados, and my dad is half mm. Bajan. So I went over there, spent some time there. Um, and then came back, but I've been back and forth ever since. I've had citizenship since I was born. So, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, we, I can't, I I, to, it's home for me. Yeah. I was talking to Jambi McGrath earlier, and I was talking about, because she's got dual uh, citizenship as well, and we were talking about how, mm. uh, you know, the, the Brexit thing, has, has that impacted on her travel? And she said, not really. No, it's more impacted the people that voted for Brexit, which makes me laugh. But anyway, is it is it? Do you still find it easy to go back and forth? Yeah, because I've got yeah. two parts. Especially when I go out to Barbados, I'll just go in my British passport, and then yeah. with, when I land, I will turn up um, and go into the shorter queue. Because <laughs> 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 everyone on the plane is British, isn't it? So I'm just gonna get off yeah, the plane yeah, and get yeah. in the shorter queue. <laughs> I'm just gonna go over here. It's just a door straight to your house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I need. Go but home. You got, you the, got, but, go on. I was just going to say, go home, get myself a roti from Chaffet, which is probably my favourite restaurant in the world. I say restaurant, it's yeah. a fast food restaurant, but it's like not go like on. McDonald's kind of level. And then just enjoy my best life with some rum punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. Sounds like you need to go there sooner rather than later. I think November might be a bit far off. <laughs> yeah, I know. I hear that. I wish, I wish yeah. it was sooner, but unfortunately... Some of us decided they were going to do a brand new shout. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. I can't tell you how better my year already is knowing that I'm not going to Edinburgh. I don't have to. You know, I'm working on a show, but I'm working. I've got so much time because it's not till next year. You it's know amazing. what I say to you? Um, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> yeah. I had a feeling it might be something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fuck you. 
<laughs> my thing is no one even told me to go and do the fringe again everyone was like you don't have to do it you could just like take a year off if you want to and i was like you know what i think i'm gonna challenge myself i write myself a brand new show in a, in eight months why would i do that who told me to do that right. no one, yeah <laughs> that's ridiculous just put pressure on yourself yeah however well, it, it was... has made me write so yeah, yeah. that's made, made you write, write quite so... a lot of material well that's the, well that's the thing at least that's see i think we need to focus on the positive stuff all right that's what you know you're you're putting together and it's not easy putting a show together i don't think people realize they just go yeah we're just gonna you go no I, yeah I, I could talk for an hour but it doesn't mean it's gonna be funny you know what i mean i've got to, i've got to make it funny and that's difficult and that means i have to go and do edible previews it means i have to get a room somewhere and someone and then get people to come and see us uh, trust me that there's going to be an interesting show that they're going to come and see and it's so and then when the weather's like this no one wants to come and see that what it's a show no. that's just been written nah you're alright mate <laughs> <laughs> I um oh it's gone from my head I had a thought but um no it's gone from my head you carry on <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's well but because people don't know who I am, so it's diff more. It's more. I don't really have that sort of a profile where people will go, "Oh yeah, let's go and watch Rich in a in a in a basement in the middle of summer." They go, "No, I'm gonna, I'll, listen, I will watch his shit online. I ain't bothered about the rest of it." So it's hard. It is hard on whatever level you're trying to get people into a show that you haven't written yet. It's hard. Yeah, which is why obviously, like, if I didn't have to be on social media to promote shows, I wouldn't be on social yeah. media. Um, I would just only use it occasionally to post a picture of me looking pretty. <laughs> just, but just even look. that, I was, if you put, I've noticed, if you put something up that you're maybe interested in or something that you're doing, you get a little bit of engagement. If you put a picture up of yourself, especially on Instagram, it goes nuts. And you're like, yeah. but I don't want, I look like a prick if I keep posting pictures of myself. I don't want to um. be, I don't want to be that guy. Go on. It's okay to be that guy sometimes. <laughs> it's okay to love sometimes. yourself. No, it's, it's okay to love yourself and appreciate yourself to be like, I'm amazing because all the people that come off Love Island, they do the same things. All you see is pictures of them on their social media. So That's true. If you yeah. can, if they can do it, why can't you do it? <laughs> I think it's just an old-fashioned thing. It's an old-fashioned bloke thing. You know, just keep your head down. Don't make a fuss. Only, only, only girls post pictures of themselves. It's an old thing. It's an old thing from my childhood. All these hang-ups that I'm dealing with, which is why my mental health is so fucked. <laughs> oh, come on, Rich. Because today you look like you should be taking pictures of you out in the sun with with your silver fox self, Fucking with some right, sunglasses mate. on. Do you know I did a video this morning? I did a video this morning. I posted it for our patrons. So I did that this morning. So there was a bit of it. It's been a bit of it. It's just not been in the public domain. See, when you say it that way, that kind of makes it seem like something they're paid for. <laughs> that kind of makes it seem like they're paying for something a little bit more extra. <laughs> oh, yeah, did I say Patreon? I meant OnlyFans. Because <laughs> <laughs> you oh, were like this though. morning, and I was like, mm, okay, first thing in the morning. Okay, uh, Rich. Yeah, 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 a bit of morning glory. I am. Um, <laughs> I got my first no. It's the the, 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 the second uh, like suggest like DM sexy DMs of these guys. This is this other guy's done it now, uh, asking me for nudes, and I'm like, oh what? <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. I've, I know that I know women get it all the time, but I've never had it before. I was quite. I got into a conversation with him. <laughs> <laughs> Were you like, what angle would you like? <laughs> I just went, mate. I said, listen, I, I appreciate the, I appreciate it, but you don't want to see this naked. He went, I do. That's why I asked. And I'm like, mate, honestly. And he says, how much? And I'm going, look, I don't, mate. I, and I really was like, shall I just do it? <laughs> <laughs> if it's going to make it's you some money, if anything. <laughs> this saggy old biscuit sending no, pictures. No, <laughs> people, that's, some people enjoy that. You've got to cater yeah. for the people and their needs. Yeah, yeah. But there are people that make a fortune from it. I know there's people I know that have travelled the world from feet pictures, that they, money they've made from that. And You know what I mean? People want yeah. that. Like you say, people want stuff, don't they? If they want it, you've got to give it to them. 
<laughs> if there's demand oh, really? for it, yeah. If, <laughs> if there's demand for it, and they and they provide you uh, a a very nice, <laughs> safe way of you pre- to present it, then yeah. why not? This sounds like you've done this. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know what you're nah. talking about, mate. <laughs> oh, mate. I mean, we, anyway, all have, we, all have, we all have our fetishes and our kinks, is what I'm saying. Do you know what? I, it's true. Everyone's got a thing. I've been saying this in my, in my set recently, and the whole room goes weird. And I'm like, listen, you've all got a thing. I'm not saying you all like to be hung from the rafters by your ear holes, dressed in head to toe rubber. But you've all got a thing, it, whether it's you like ear, you like ears, or you like hair, or whatever. Everyone's got a thing. You're on a scale somewhere. If you haven't got a thing, you're weird. Everyone's yeah. got a thing. I think it's to do because I've been talking about this in my show about how you show love and how you receive love. So your love language. So like, if people are yeah. in into physical touch, they are into physical touch. But if they're mm. into like, acts of service, then how they sh- how they which I also love. People who, who want to do acts of service, do that for me all the time. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> we love acts of service. Mm. Uh, so, <laughs> so those those people they ha- they show their love in a different way. So, it's all about their little quirks and their and their kinks and stuff like that. Yeah, I think people need to be more honest about these things. If it's not if it's not hurting anybody, then you should just accept it and just. Yeah, more people should embrace it. You know, look, uh, you know, there's. I've talked about it many times on here. Things that I like, and I've always been with people that have been very. It's all about consent, and it's all, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not. It's not. You know, getting locked in a suitcase and all that mad shit. But, <laughs> you know, because I think on, that's on a, a different a, program. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole new episode. <laughs> yeah, that's 24 hours people, of police custody. <laughs> I think people should be more open with these things because I grew up thinking I was weird and then now the internet's come around I'm like oh shit what I'm quite vanilla in comparison yeah so I help um, a couple women I think you might have met them run a show called Hooray Cabaret Um, yeah 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 yeah, and um, sometimes we have like love we all love audience members who regulars come to the show are lovely but there was this one who was Wow, they're not going to watch. There was one called no. Big Baby. Okay. And yeah. you can, and basically, it was uh-huh. it was a, as a person who was who would dress, come to the show in nappies, and would basically be like, "I would love for you lot to change my nappy dr- at one point during the show." And we didn't, wow, we didn't, man. we didn't. There was no awkwardness. There was. It was yeah. never a situation where we were like, "No, that's weird. Get out." We're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe it's just not for me. Maybe someone else <laughs> at the show may want to do it. But um, good luck with that. Good luck with that. But it's nice that there's a safe space for that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> each to their own. That's what I mean. Yeah, um, each to their own. I, I, there's, I've had many conversations with friends of mine. And I'm like, and they tell me all manner of stuff, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, just embrace it, mate. You're not, you're not hurting anybody. It's not. Everyone that's involved is is consenting. Everyone's old enough, so whatever you're doing is completely fine. You know, it's when you yeah. start to make someone do stuff that's the, that's the difference. So, is this are we without going into too much detail? Is this something that's happened on your birthday that's made you shut down, or is it just you getting older and just? I, I think it is me getting. I used to really enjoy partying and like I still enjoy partying, but I used to enjoy celebrating my birthday. It used to be yeah. like the time of the year that I could get pe- all my people together and like enjoy me and embrace me and celebrate me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I um, turned 30, had a breakdown of some right. sort. And then every, ever since then, I've just been like nothing. When it comes to my birthday, the things that I wanted to have, achieved by that time of my birthday of that year whatever year it was has just never manifested so Mm. I've always been like well all the other goals and things have worked out but why is the things that I really want to have that's going to make me feel 
at least semi complete. Mm. Why are they not happening? Yeah. What yeah, What yeah. is it about me that's not allowing those things to happen? Yeah. And is that is there like certain things in your personal life that you wanted to have happened? Like I don't know. Yeah. So like or whatever. No, I don't believe in marriage. No offense. No. <laughs> I've never really believed in <laughs> I've never really believed in marriage. Um I appreciate people who want to get married. I just don't understand I don't I've never really ever since I was younger, I've never really mm. understood it. Um uh, my parents are not married and they've been together. Um Yeah. But um it was more to do with oh sorry. It was more to do with like yeah, like not being in a relationship, not having a cuz I'm the only child, so like having my own family. Mm. The fact that I still am in a house with my parents, even though like I sacrificed a lot for that, for me to be here because we paid off the mortgage. So mm. like to do that, um, yeah, not being able to like have more free time, the fact that I'm still working two jobs, mm. those kind of things, I wanted to not have present. Yes, present. Yeah. At this time. And like I wanted my own family and now I'm getting older, it's going to be a bit more difficult for that to be achieved. And now mm. I'm like, well, do I even want to have that? Right, right, right. Yeah. So all the things are playing on your, playing on your mind. Yeah. Yeah. But what is it about when you turned 30? What was it? Was it about you suddenly you felt, did you feel old? Did you feel, because being well, 30 is nothing. Just... No, it wasn't to do with feeling old at all. I think it was more to do with I felt stuck. I right. felt like I was in the same place I was when I was 25. Yeah. Nothing had changed, nothing had improved, and I to a certain point the same as is how it is now. It's just yeah. that things that are happening on a public setting like comedy um are uh, obviously better like i'm making money i'm doing quite w doing quite well in comedy touch wood mm. um but everything else the things that i wanted to achieve by now I i've not come to it fruition 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 Flu yeah fruition yeah so you felt like you sort of let yourself down or what you've yeah, got? Yeah, I feel, me yeah, I I do, it's kind of, yeah, it's, yeah, Hello? you're gone. Rich is gone. Rich is back. Rich is back. Oh, man, what is going on? I've got brilliant internet. What the fuck, man? It's because it's warm. Me in it. Wrong uh, kind of internet. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can, oh, we were getting right into it then. I know. Sorry about that. It's always the way. Um, you always get into it and then something happens. <laughs> <laughs> You're not meant to talk about it. Um, <laughs> so, it's um, we do put a lot of pressure on ourselves. I know that much. And it's hard, <laughs> it's hard to kind of take a step back and... Yeah, Again, like look at what you have got rather than what you haven't. It's hard, it's hard to do that. I do that all the time. I find it all piles up. And I'm like, oh, why is why is this happening? Why is that happening? And then I have to remind myself that, like my missus said, she said the other day, she went, you're in a position that younger you would have killed to have been in. There are also other people around you that would love to do what you do and be where you are. And so you have to remember that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that is true. You know, I'm very lucky. I remember being 20, I was 29, split up with this girl, ended up back at my mum and dad's. I was about to turn 30 and I'm at my mum and dad's back in the house I grew up in. And I, and I remember, yes, I know what you mean. I was like, what the fuck have I done? Yeah. I was back. For, I was back. Me, it was like, horrible. For me, it was, it's the fact that, for example, like me and my parents, like I love my parents to death, but I've, mm. I've never left this house. Yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't go to, I went to uni, but I didn't have the uni life. My uni was, was quite close. So. Right. All I've, yeah. My, this has been my, my had this house, this flat, even though it's the best flat in the world. Um, mm. and I'm never going to sell it, but like, it's just 
I've never had independence. I've never had freedom. Like I've literally just paid for them to go away on holiday because my mum's never had a holiday without me since I was born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they literally wow. went off this morning on holiday um, because so I can have five days to myself. So you're feeling you're feeling a bit of pressure, yeah. It's a lot. I'm, just, I'm just feeling I'm just feeling a bit lost. I'm feeling a bit alone. Um, yeah. Yeah, I get it. I totally understand it. I totally get it. So what can what can we do? What can we do to get out of this? What can we do to make things better for you? What do you think? What would be the answer? Or what 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 can you do rather than what you can't do? What can you do? Um, I think there's three things that you can do for me, Rich Wilson, if you are a genie. Okay. Uh, number one, I would like um. Oh, no, wait. One million eight hundred and twenty thousand pounds. Okay, that's very specific. Yeah. Okay. So I would like that, please. Is that's that number how much one. You're in debt by Jesus. No, I'm actually debt free. <laughs> thank you very much. No, oh, well done, well done. You're the yeah. only person I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the student loan one came, and I was like, I didn't even know I was paying that off. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, I had no idea. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I literally was like, I had no idea I was paying that off. <laughs> and because I took letters just kept piling up, and I was like, I'm not going to open them up. <laughs> like, no, go, go away. Um, <laughs> so we got so um, one, one million eight hundred and twenty and twenty. All right, thousand pounds. So that's number okay. one. Number two, I would like someone who will uh, love me unconditionally and provide me with spooning hugs every day. Oh, mate. Yeah. That is lovely. That is important. Yeah. And that, yeah. But like we said earlier, people forget how important that is. Yeah. Just having someone there. Right, yeah. Just to, totally just to have, it. like, someone to hug. I like a spoon. I love a hug. Yeah. So those kind of things um, would be lovely. And number three, I would like my own private, I was. I want to say plane, but I feel like that's going to be bad for the environment. So I'm going to say <laughs> private train. Okay, yeah. I would to like my own private anywhere. train. To right. like travel, because I don't like traveling. Right. But if I had my own private train that had like a bed on it, it's right. own like fr like imagine like first class on a on a plane but in a train yeah. right yeah That's yeah what I yeah want. so you know how many carriages are we talking four four yeah cuz you need one for your yeah. meals one for me one whole one for me yeah which will have like a desk in it and stuff like that one for the staff obviously cuz they've <laughs> got to work Oh yeah, yeah, they've got to work, and obviously they yeah, have to yeah, be comfy, yeah, yeah, yeah. comfortable in work. Of One course. for the entourage. Okay. One for the entourage. <laughs> um, Who's in your entourage? Uh, what do they bring to the table? Are they just taking money from you? <laughs> no, they're just there for the party vibes. So if right, I get right, bored, right, right, right. So, <laughs> so, so like, you fancy that the entourage? There's people like like your, you know. Like your Beyonce, just, friends, just have all just these like, people around, yeah. Yeah, just my friends who are just like just there for the little gossip. We watch TV, catch up on like Love Island, and have a little gossip. Yeah, yeah. And then I don't know what will be the fourth carriage. Probably the restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd need a whole carriage yeah. for you and your entourage to eat. Yeah, and yeah. sleep and. Look you come across as being this no shit given i will fucking I reckon it's that again. ruin everything and you don't no one fucks with sakisa <laughs> and then talking to you now i'm like yeah you're just you're yeah you're you're vulnerable like the rest of us we all get we all put a front don't we really survival yeah. survival of the fittest i've like yeah. i said I've, I've worked all all my life i've had to like fight through obstacles all my life uh, a lot of things now make sense um mm. since reevaluating things like i said from the assessment of being dyslexic 
But yeah. um, I don't. I'm just kind of tired to the point where I'm just like, I don't want to feel bitter about the world because I do love the world. I do appreciate the world. There's some amazing things out there. Like I just went to a music festival, and it's one of my favorite music festivals in the world. And I got to perform at that festival. It was the oh, best wow. time ever. Um, they sang Happy Birthday to me, and that was lovely. Um, nice. And I got to see some of my favorite bands in the world. So those kind of things are like things that I love and I get to, got to do it with people that was lovely around me that were not dicks. So having those moments in life, I really appreciate, but there are some days where you're just like, where you're just, you're, you're, you feel like you want to lose the fight. Yeah. And there's, and there's nothing around you sometimes where you're just, that will make you not want to carry on that fight, which is probably the hardest thing having to get up, and be like, I have to carry on this day. Mm. You have to think about the hole that you would leave if you didn't. Like, you're, you, there, there's so many people that love you. They, that I know for a fact that there would be, there would be, everyone would be devastated if something silly was to happen. So, yeah, I was actually thinking about yeah, that the other day. You know. <laughs> I randomly yeah. was thinking about that the other day. Like, if I was to, if I was to like die, like. R.I.P. But obviously, not obviously yet. <laughs> but like, if I was to die, how many people would actually come to my funeral? And what legacy would I leave behind? Is it just me just talking about get some dick? Like, is that the legacy I'm leaving? <laughs> like, <laughs> that'd be on your gravestone. Just get some. Yeah, dick just hashtag GSD. Quotes. Yeah, just hashtag <laughs> GSD would be on my tombstone. That's the legacy I've left behind. But I think, uh, um, but then, but then, get some dick. I mean, that just is really another way of just saying, look, try and find some enjoyment. Try and find some good shit out there. Do you know what I mean? It sums it all up perfectly. Like, I mean, yeah, you say get some dick, but that, that you, what you mean is like, get some fun, have some fun, and if you want, get some dick. <laughs> like, yeah, that, no, no, I really, that can be really part mean, of it. Yeah, I really meant get some dick. Um, like people, <laughs> there's no like, I really, deeper meaning. <laughs> no, like I started that catchphrase. For a particular reason. Like, people think that I say certain things on stage for bands, and I'm like, no, I'm being serious right now. I'm trying to get some dick, yeah? But I'm trying to make it a bit more universal as well. So give some dick if you're a man. Um, so give some dick. Right. Uh, get, get some digits if you're a lesbian. Right, get some yeah. digits. Uh, generate some dick if you're bisexual. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> generate some dick. Yeah. Or Well I, I uh, yeah. Yeah, or or you can use it for get some get some drinks or get shit done. Get shit done. There you go. Get shit or done. Or German Shepherd dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've already I think I've done my share of uh, giving dicks and uh get myself in <laughs> trouble and I'm like <laughs> So I don't think the world needs any more of that. And uh, I've got my, my lovely wife now, she can have it. <laughs> She's just taking it and just put it on a mantelpiece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she's got it. She's just stuck it in a jar. And it's yeah. over the. It's, yeah, nice. <laughs> um, Rich, I, I do yeah, apologise. This is a very late question, but how are you? I'm all right, thank you. But I have days. I've had. I had a day. Um, I had a few days the other week where I was. I had the same thing. I was like, "What's the fucking point? What's the point?" I'm slogging my guts out. I feel tired. But then I started to think about what I did have and the lovely people around me and someone I thought I'd fallen out with he dropped me a text and really I was like, Oh, this is amazing. It was such a beautiful moment. I was like, You could you don't know how fucking perfectly timed this is. Because I don't like falling out with people. I don't I hate it and sometimes it's because of my own stupidity and whatever else, but I try to be you know, I try to be good to everyone and we had a bit of a falling out and then getting back in touch and that kind of changed it i went oh people do think you're all right you know what i mean and it yeah. sort of fired me up so yeah i feel all right actually i'm in a good place the sun is shining and the sea's over there i get to chuck myself in that every day it's nice all the sewage from the pipes yeah exactly i was just about to say it is <laughs> it is brighton right <laughs> yeah 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 i get to chuck myself in all the shit every day it's, yeah. good, for you. it's good for the skin you know really getting involved exfoliates <laughs> oh, okay I'll remember that next time I'm there yeah 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When you come down, I'll show you. I'll show you where to swim and where not to swim. <laughs> yeah, exfoliation is what I need. Yeah, from yeah, seaweed. yeah. The seaweed is for the <laughs> So when what? So what's happening? You got a new show coming out. You got a new show coming together. Taking it to Edinburgh. Yeah, taking it to Edinburgh. It's called Hear Me Out. The work in progress version is words. Um, it should. It's it. It's meant to be a more vulnerable show about communication. Um, and I will end it in something hopefully a little bit special. Oh, okay. That's Good. all I'm revealing. You're not gonna, you're not gonna top yourself on stage, right? Mind you, that'd be a bit of a pain in the ass every yeah. night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Imagine doing that for 27 runs. Yeah, <laughs> that'd and be crazy. Coming back, <laughs> come back from but, the dead. Um, Ooh. Imagine what a show. Um, where can we find you on all the social media bits and bobs? Uh, you can find me on, I've got a website, which is sakisacomedy.com, or you can find me on Instagram, which is what I'm normally on, which is sakisa underscore aka underscore Twix, Twix like the chocolate, um, or if you just type in Twix comedy, it pops up, um, or if you type in sakisa comedy on Twitter or Facebook, I will pop up as well. Lovely. That's it. Lovely. And I'm going <laughs> to tell you this now, and I mean this. You can message me whenever you want, even if it's just taking a piss, like you did at the beginning. Just do that. <laughs> just do, well, how's it going, dickhead? And just do that, because I'd rather you did that than just sit there in the darkness thinking that you're on your own, because you're not. There's loads of people around that love you, and I know that for oh, bless a fact. You. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate so, yeah. that. Um, that's all right, mate. It's always lovely to Telling see you, you as well, because you've got great banter, and that's what we like. There you go. Well, next time I see you, you can rag on me again. <laughs> yeah. I quite like it. It's an old working class thing. If they're taking a the piss, it means they like you. If they don't, oh. if they're not taking a piss, it means uh, quite the opposite. So, fair play. Gone. I hope so. Anyway, I'm probably wrong. Anyway, uh, this has been lovely. Apologies for all the glitches and all the fall. It's not normally like that. That's been shit today. So, sorry about no, that. No worries, well. Lovely. But no, this has been okay. insane. You'll need to apologize. Yeah, it's been lovely. No, no, I'll do it because it's, 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 you know what it is? It's because I'm at home. Normally I'm in the studio with Paul. Ah. Oh. We've had to do it from here today, so uh, I apologise. But uh, let's, let's, uh, it's been lovely to have you on. Uh, this has been Insane in the Membrane. I've been Rich Wilson. This has been Sakisa, and we'll see you next time. Insane in the Membrane. Nice.